Daphne Broadhurst. I'm a clinical nurse specialist. In this video, I'm going to explain some tips to successfully teach your patients to self-administer their home IV antibiotics with an elastomeric infusion device in just one visit. I'll start with a brief overview on the research behind this, and then we're going to go into what an agenda for a typical one-hour visit would look like in which you accomplish this teaching. We'll review some key teaching principles to help ensure a successful learning experience for your patients. And I'm going to pause throughout the video to review some of the key messages as indicated by a green check mark on your screen. The goal with this video is to help build nurses' self-efficacy in effective patient education so that the patient can learn how to safely and successfully self-administer their IV antibiotics in a timely manner, that is, in just one visit. Note that this video, though, does not go into the technical procedural steps of self-administration. That's going to be shared in a separate video. You'll learn how to plan your nursing visit to teach the patient to self-administer their home IV antibiotics in just one visit. And please know that when I refer to patient in the video, the learner may be either the patient or an informal caregiver, such as a family member or a friend. The content of this video is based on research from a master's nursing thesis designed to explain the characteristics and mechanisms of patient education in self-administration of home IV antibiotics. The literature review findings and participant feedback suggests that self-administration is safe and effective, with completion of therapy as prescribed and leading to patient satisfaction and avoidance of hospital ad admissions, as well as personal well-being for patients and improved quality health care with enhanced resource utilization. The findings are derived from a multiple case study in which nurses and patients were observed and interviewed at a community IV program in Canada and a home infusion pharmacy in the United States. One of the biggest aha learnings in this research was that a nurse can indeed teach patients successfully how to self-administer their IV antibiotics in the safety and comfort of their homes in just one visit as opposed to the three or more visits observed at another case site. I'm going to share with you the core components of a one visit teaching schedule so that you too can be an awesome coach teaching your patient in just one visit. Let's have a quick look at what you need to be successful. First, you need competent, caring and patient educators who are skilled at both motivation and encouragement of their learners. You need resources to optimize the teaching and learning experience. Ideally, you'll have easy to use supplies such as elastomeric infusion devices, IV push, pre-filled saline syringes. You also need to do the teaching, hopefully, in a quiet, non-distracting environment and need personalized patient education material, preferably multimedia, to supplement the learning. Thirdly, of course you need willing and able patients who develop a sense of skill mastery, self-efficacy, autonomy, physical well-being, and a sense of family and privacy. And when I say patients, I'm referring to patients and or their informal caregivers. You also need a supportive care system to support the patient on an ongoing basis throughout their therapy. Now let's delve into some of these components. Both nurses and patients indicate that nurses need to be competent, caring, and patient educators skilled at motivation and encouragement. To achieve this, the nurse needs nurse mentorship, policies, procedures, training, and best practice guidelines. You really need to know your stuff to gain patient confidence and trust. You also have to be on top of best practice guidelines in vascular access to ensure you are teaching your patients the proper content and ensure each nurse is being consistent in what they are teaching patients. For instance, 
patients found it very frustrating if one nurse says to use one saline flush and then another nurse comes along and says, no, you need to use two flushes. As one study participant stated, if the nurses don't even know the right way, how am I supposed to? You need to have the right resources as well to get this teaching done in one visit. Nurses observed teaching in one visit found it much easier to teach using easy to use technology. They indicated a preference for elastomeric devices or IV push and pre-filled saline syringes, stating it's much easier for patients to learn. You also need to minimize distractions, preferably teaching in a private room if possible, with the TV and the phones turned off, and any non-participants ideally out of the room. They also tended to use written patient education materials more so than nurses who required multiple visits to teach. Please remember to use written material. Not everyone is a hands-on or auditory learner. Research has shown that if you personalize the patient education material, patients are much more likely to use it. So you can highlight or circle the key information or those parts perhaps that the patient tended to forget, write their name on the information, and use multimedia materials. Again, studies have shown that combining materials such as demonstration with written material and or video is more effective. Patients in this study requested videos to support their learning. One of the most critical elements of this model is that you need patients who are willing and able to perform self-administration. Admittedly, this can also be the most challenging component. So let's look at how you can help engage patients to participate in self-administration. The patient needs to feel confident that they are not alone. They should feel reassured that 24-7-7 clinical support for the patient is available to ensure their safety. In addition, their healthcare team, be it nursing, pharmacy, the most responsible prescriber, and perhaps infectious disease consultants will be monitoring their progress to ensure they are on the path to recovery. We'll take a closer look at what a supportive care system entails shortly, but first let's delve further into a few of these components that will help you successfully coach your patient in self-administration. Let's look at how you can engage patients and or their caregivers who are able, but may be somewhat hesitant to assume this active role. The goal is to help patients understand they can take an active role in their care rather than being a passive recipient who's dependent on nurses. This can be a significant hurdle, particularly in a universal healthcare system in which the patient is accustomed to the nurse being the doer and the patient the receiver. We really need to create a culture of embracing the safety, efficacy, and acceptability of self-administration from both the patient and healthcare provider perspective. Let's look at how the study case site helps patients to engage in self-administration. The general consensus of participating nurses was that rather than presenting it as an option, set the expectation at the first point of contact, the patient is an active participant in their treatment performing self-administration. So how do programs do this? Let's look at a brief excerpt of a call to a patient to set up the first visit this video demonstrates what a dialogue might look like between the care coordinator or clinical intake and the patient. It may occur pre-discharge while the patient is still in hospital or over the phone once the patient is discharged. Hi Scott, I hope you're starting to feel better since getting home. My name is Daphne, I'm a nurse with Infusion Excellence. I'd like to schedule your nursing visit so you can start your IV medicine. When your nurse arrives, he or she will help you set up your medicine and a small, easy to use pump. We have an online video and an information sheet that you can follow as well. They'll show you how to flush your pick to keep it working and you'll see how to connect your pump to your pick. You just twist it onto your IV cap and the medicine will start automatically flowing. After a half hour, when the balloon pump is flat, it's empty. 
and the nurse will then show you how to twist off the pump from your pick and you'll flush your pick again. The nurse will walk through each of these steps with you. You'll get to practice and learn it well so you can give yourself your medicine every day. After the nurse teaches you, they'll keep seeing you at least once a week. They'll be in to change your dressing. And in the meantime, we are just a phone call away if you have any questions or need any help. Let's review what you learned in the clip. Which approach is most effective at engaging patients in self-administration? Should you present self-administration as an option? Or do you present self-administration as the expected mode of therapy to gain the patient's engagement? Hopefully you've responded that you would just present self-administration as the expectation. Now, in the video clip, I gave an example of how to engage the patient in self-administration from the outset. What additional strategies were used to promote patient engagement? Firstly, I used a kind, caring approach. I introduced the concepts of an easy-to-use pump, patient education material, nurse coaching, and ongoing supportive care available to help the patient so that they believe that they can do this. We know, however, that it's not always this easy to engage patients. Let's look at some other strategies. If the patient is hesitant, you need to identify mechanisms to activate their willingness. Help them to understand the benefits of self-administration that may be relevant to them. You can ask them, do they find it tiring having to go to clinic? Self-administration can support physical well-being and safety because they don't have to go out to the clinic. They can stay home and rest in the comfort of their home, perhaps keeping their foot elevated if they have cellulitis of the lower leg or foot. Studies have shown that patients doing their own IV antibiotics is safe and works well. Many patients do this with a high level of satisfaction. We enforce that they're not alone in doing this. Do they find it difficult taking time from work or school to be home when the nurse can visit or to go to the clinic? Self-administration allows the treatment to fit their lifestyle. For instance, they can give their own medications at home, at work, or at the cottage, and they don't need someone perhaps to watch the kids while they go to the clinic. Ask them if they prefer to be independent and not reliant on others. Self-administration can increase their sense of control and autonomy. Do they like to learn a new skill? It can be very re rewarding to patients to be able to develop a sense of skill mastery and self-efficacy. One patient in the study was so proud of himself telling his friends he's like a nurse now. Ask them if they prefer to stay home with their family and not have strangers come in their home. Self-administration supports a sense of family and privacy. Is it costly for them to travel to clinic paying for transportation or parking? Self-administration can provide financial gain by saving the costs of childcare, transportation, parking, or taking time off from work. Perhaps their response when you ask them about self-administration was, I pay my taxes, it's your job to do this. Explain that we all have to support our healthcare system to ensure that there are funds available for others who re really need this care to make sure we have a sustainable health care system for our children. You can ask them if they've seen or heard others who have performed self-administration. One patient in the study indicated that he saw a patient learning to use his own pump in the clinic and thought, hey, I can do that. Another said that they had learned to give injections to their pets. Past experience will help their learning. Remind them of the support of care available. Helps just a phone call away, they will not be alone. Let's say you now have a patient who's engaged and indicated that they are willing to learn. They also need to be able to both learn and perform the tasks, but how can you assess their ability? You need to determine their cognitive status. You can ask them the name, the date. Do they take care of themselves at home? Assess if they have the physical ability. Are they able to get medications out of the fridge? If they're confined to bed, self-administration may not be appropriate as they can't get their supplies out of the fridge. Are they able to twist off the toothpaste lid or the lid 
of a can, this can provide an indication of their fine motor skills. Let's look at how the nurses at one of the study sites accomplish teaching the patients how to self-administer in one visit. A typical visit for that site is one hour in length. You really need to be organized in your approach to accomplish your patient assessment, your teaching, your administration of the medication in this time frame. You need to go into your visit with a clear, well-organized plan and schedule for the visit. And of course, you have to modify that to meet each patient's unique needs. Let's look at how nurses at one of the study sites accomplished teaching the patient how to self-administer in one visit. Please note that you can also find a separate instructional video for patients to learn how to use elastomeric devices. After identifying the patient, you need to review the plan of care and the learning goals with the patient while you're setting your supplies. Discuss any allergies, then go to the sink with the patient and demonstrate hand washing or use hand sanitizer if the patient has it. Explain the areas of the hand that need to be washed. Discuss the principles of infection prevention as you're doing hand washing. Return to the work area, helping the patient to identify the best place for them to do their procedures. If the patient needs an extension set added to their vascular access device, do this now so that they'll be able to do the self-administration. Then demonstrate with explanations how to flush the catheter and have the patient return that demonstration. Show them where this information is located in their patient education material. Describe the infusion device, the components of the infusion device, such as your elastomeric device, and how it works and how it's attached. Have the patient attach the pump to their vascular access device. While the infusion is running, Describe how to take care of the infusion device and to monitor the infusion. Then while it's infusing, this is the time to complete your patient admission and your assessment. You can also discuss how the patient should take care of their vascular access device. Review potential complications, signs and symptoms, and actions to take. Again, because this is more teaching, reinforce their learning by showing them this in the patient education material so they know where to get that information at a later date. Discuss how they should store their supplies and medications and how to order more supplies. Now, once the infusion is completed, you're going to explain how to disconnect and then have the patient do it themselves. Have them do the disconnection and ask the patient to flush their device so that you can validate your teaching and ensure they understand. At the end of the visit, review the patient's progress. Determine if you and they feel able to safely perform self-administration on their own with the agency just a phone call away. Conclude with discussing the plan of care. If further teaching visits are required, set the learning goals for the next visit emphasizing key areas to focus on that the patient may have struggled with. Be sure to document that learning progress to communicate to the next care provider the patient's current understanding of self-care. Review any follow-up appointments and who they should call if they have any problems. Ideally, you work with a collaborative interprofessional health team. Both case sites in this research had pharmacists and or infection disease actively following the patients for assessment, therapeutic serum monitoring, counseling, and treatment adjustment. Now that concludes your initial visit, which was focused on teaching. You've done a great job teaching the patient how to self-administer. And ideally, your patient is able to perform self-administration, taking the I care path away. However, you may discover that there's limitation to your patient's ability to perform self-care. You can assess whether perhaps limited or partial care may be an option. If they're unable to perform some of the tasks, you can consider what we call the we care or the partial care route. In this scenario, nurses are required for part of the administration of each dose. However, the patient performs some of the tasks. For instance, a nurse explained for some patients, she goes in daily to assess the patient and device. She hooks up the infusion and then leaves the home. 
and the patient is responsible for disconnecting and flushing upon completion of the dose. That frees up the nurse to complete a shorter visit, yet promotes a sense of patient autonomy and self-efficacy. Let's check in. What do you need to successfully teach a patient in one visit? Hopefully you've answered all of the above. You need to be a skilled patient educator. And what does that mean? You know your material, you're caring, you're patient, and you apply principles of adult learning and teach back. Your patients were hopefully re recruited prior to your visit to be willing and ready active participants in their care. You walked into the visit with a clear, well-organized plan or agenda for the visit. There's a lot of content to cover in just 60 minutes. It's also okay if you'd prefer to have a discrete cheat sheet or a crib sheet of bullet points to guide your teaching. This will help ensure you cover the key points in a clear, coherent manner. And ensure that at every opportunity, the patient has a chance to perform each task so that you can validate your teaching and the learning and feel confident that you've taught them well enough that they can safely self-administer. Once you've completed your patient teaching and the patient is ready and able to self-administer, how can you ensure that the patient is progressing as per care plan if you're not doing those routine visits as frequently? In subsequent visits or virtual visits, You'll need to assess the patient's condition and response to treatment. Is the patient improving as expected? Review their lab values. Are they as expected? Have they been participating in lab monitoring? Is their supply usage appropriate? Are their medications and supplies stored appropriately? How do they feel about their treatment? What's their satisfaction with self-administration? How does their vascular access device look and is the catheter patent? If they've had any complications, how did they manage them? As well, review if there were any emergency room visits or hospital readmissions, and if so, what was the cause? Have they missed any follow-up appointments? Ensure you provide plenty of positive reinforcement when you do see the patients of their self-efficacy and accomplishments. And then based on your assessment findings, you may need to adjust your care plan accordingly. Now let's review how you can feel confident that your patient is doing well while self-administering. Your assessment should reveal that they are responding to treatment as expected, their lab values are appropriate, there's minimal complications, they're using the right type and the quantity of supplies and medications and reordering their supplies as needed, they're attending follow-up appointments, there's a good strong sense of satisfaction with the management of their care, and hopefully they're being followed by a collaborative interprofessional team. And this concludes part one, in which you've learned how to accomplish teaching a patient self-administration in just one visit. Look for part two of this video series, where I delve into some key teaching principles to optimize your teaching and your patient's learning experience. Thank you. I'd like to thank Formative Pharma for their educational grant to support the development of this video.